just me riffing a bit at uh 2 a.m. Uh, nostalgic as fuck. I don't know how the, the metadata is gonna look on these attacks and such. Uh, but I'm just thinking about like music like 10 years ago. Um, cause it's almost 2022, which is fucking crazy to think about. Yo, if 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 doves cry, bro. Um, you know, 2011 was crazy because you had a. Uh, you had Goblin by Tyler. You had uh, Live Love ASAP. Uh, fucking, I think Raider Clan formed. Uh, Space Those Perp. Uh, Black Clan Radio. Um, Pro Era just got started. Shout out to Capital C's RIP. Um, shit, dude. Pretty, pretty much all the good shit that came out of like the 2010s from before in 2011. Uh, I think Donald, Donald Trump by Mac Miller. I think they dropped 2011. Fucking, like, Mike Posner's, like, doing shit with Lil Wayne. And then you get to, like, the underground, dude. And, you know, like I said, like, Hot Future, bro. Like, Hot Future was at their... I said 2012, like, their, their zenith. But, like, that's what we're talking about, right? Ten years ago. Uh, and then 2011 was important because I think that's, like... I think, like, the promo singles around this time ten years ago was when uh, the promo singles for Hot Future Tape Volume 2 was coming out. And, um, like, Rella and shit from there. Like, Rella, Sam is dead. Uh, what's it, like, H-Cap or H- Whatever the fuck it's called. Um, and then you had, like, Earl got, like, locked up, right? And, like, he wasn't on Future Tape Volume 2. I think his last shit... I think his last verse off the top of my head that was, like, release, release was, like, on a Black and White by Mellow Hype, uh, corduroy i think this was this last verse and um he gets locked up and then what really made me think about this was this dude jack mushroom which is like the most low-key ass like off to reference you can like find like there's like some shit maybe a little more lower key than that but like as far as like dudes that were like technically off associated but like you know kind of wasn't um that's like, the most low-key it gets and i'm like looking back at this shit like dude was getting like a hundred k getting like clothing collabos let me see fucking awesome was a clothing brand in uh la right let me see this supposed to be just me riffing for riffing for uh, clothing yeah so like fucking awesome like this brand out there in like california and then like they they basically hit up uh hit up him because he's like our uh, future right and, uh, I mean, he did have, like, family. Like, he had, um, he was related with, it kind of predated him. It's, like, from fucking, like, 2001, apparently. Um, he had, he was cousins with, I think, Jasper, uh, Dolphin, who, I don't know what the fuck he goes, I assume he says about Jasper, but, uh, he was cousins with Jasper, and I think he was, like, cool, like, Mike G or some shit. It was, like, the most, like, auxiliary-ass niggas in our future, like, possible, like, <laughs> really out there like branching off into like the outer skirts of our future and he came in like at the same time that like fucking earl was out like i think i think they was like going to bat for him and like tyler tyler who is still like there's a real uppity ass nigga uh which i mean i think it's a good decision by him like, to let this nigga in it sounds just like earl but in general tyler's an uppity ass nigga when it came to our future and just in general since our future um he's like no, I don't want this motherfucker to be in there like stiff arms him. And then I think that uh on our future talk uh volume four, which our future talk is this form, and I was like pretty much like was like if this is if this is Kanye Tudor, which is pretty much the most popular music form at this point, at least in terms of influence, I think um uh, like the Reddit shit might have eclipsed it, but like Reddit's for fucking I can't even say what I would say is what it's for. Um this is like KTT back in like two thousand eleven. And, like, OFT was, like, right here. Like, it was, like... <laughs> it was, like, it was, like, watch the throne. And it was, like, what a time to be alive. Like, you get off the screen, but, like, still kind of comparable. But, like, you know, not really. Um, but OFT was, like, hot for a hot minute. And um, this nigga, uh, Black B-O-V-K, who I think this motherfucker still posts on KTT. Um, nigga's, like, 35 now. He should be doing something else. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, all right. So, uh, Black like does. He's like, I don't know how the fuck he got these songs, but like, he'd have like Lucy's, 
and uh he had some shit i think it was about it was a school 300 if i remember correctly uh let's see this is just me like riffing off shit from like literally a decade ago so it's uh me having to remember but it's called freezer box uh by school 300 yeah uh so essentially jack mushroom and and school 300 had a song that was produced produced by tyler uh and it was like fucking i think it was like just some like 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 beat like so they i think he just took some beat that uh that tyler did and like just wrote over this shit like i, I don't think it was actually a beat design for them but it was a lot of shit on here bro i i, I mean really you know it's cool 300 and, and jack was pretty fucking cool like i mean like they like outside of them being basically like they dick rolled the fuck out of each other they was like putting off each other all this shit uh, Jack Mushroom was, like, riding hard as fuck. And then, like, I think, like, Schooly, because he was, like, basically Jack Mushroom's brother, kind of took some of that wave and applied his own shit. Because they had, he had a uh, Creative Bunch. That was his, that was his kind of, like, I guess, label group, Creative Bunch. And uh, all them niggas was, like, derivatives of our feature anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But, uh, <laughs> they, they, they wanted to, like, really just, like, nut hug our feature as much as possible, but, like, not claim like our future um they, they like the first famous niggas ever beat them on twitter like i think it's like 2012 and like i think i ratioed them before ratio was even a thing uh which god damn man. can you imagine a twitter without ratioing um i ratio these niggas on twitter and that was it i mean that's just i think he blocked me on twitter but uh look at some of the, the niggas that like dug up these songs um uh, Task Cam villain, I don't even know, remember who that is. It's Murder. Uh that's that's uh Maddie Murders who the kind of kinda of hot like with Tina Chick. Uh Black Jesus KTA, that's black. Uh and the rest of these niggas don't really matter. But uh <laughs> just looking at like how all this shit kind of spun off, like the funny shit is this this was just a uh a a compilation featuring our future's name by our future talk. Uh, and that shit had 56,000 views. That's crazy. That's how big Our Future was. Just a compilation of shit from Our Future that could have been just, boof, dead numbers. I mean, yeah. No shit is old. It's unreleased for a reason. Fuck face. And OF got swag to suck my dick. <laughs> or response to that by OF tour of tour nigga if you don't like what they doing get the fuck out of here life free you need a life you're sponsored to that by of lover yeah don't hate of doe if you hate have fun with satan but he spells hate with h-a and then he spells satan s-h-a-n i've never heard that i've never heard anyone spell satan like that all right hold on, i gotta sit down for a second oh I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm just going through this old ass bullshit like for like fucking 10 years ago. <laughs> this, this, yeah, this is a different time. Just understand this. Uh, easy Zahan Z. This shit whack. <laughs> Dude, my, my chest hurts, bro. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't laugh too much. Nobody would bump this shit in their car for other people to hear. Everybody look at you stupid. Posted from that Piff Mobile for <laughs> Kid underscore JTR two three one in response to that. You're a F word. <laughs> it's F word I can't say, of course. Uh your F word is okay, we don't care. <laughs> Listen, I'm not laughing at the use of the F word. I'm just like, it's just taking me back. Like people having that kind of toxic, like little conversation. That's that's all. I I just it's nostalgic for that level of shit. So yeah, um, it's just amazing to, to have lived through this period of time. So then you go to like the hops and this shit. I'm like trying to think like what's other like repressed like underscore uh, underground memories like funk volume level shit like funk volume like. 
basically dick riding Eminem um, ad nauseum or like them making their own fucking um, their own like BT like cypher. They were like they basically like made like this. Oh, don't hold up, hold up, hold up. This this was a, this was a good one. Okay, so what funk volume? And funk volume, I mean, I mean, they had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of power at one point because they had Hobson, and Hobson was, <laughs> Hobson was Hobson, dude. I mean, Hobson still gets like crazy fucking views, which is the craziest shit. But essentially, what funk volume was was this collection of based around this nigga that looks like a fucking melted durable. Uh, and his little brother named uh, Swizz, Swizzle. I think his name was Swizzle. Um, so so Swizzle, as I understand, um, found this nigga Hobson just, I guess, like, scream at the world because he was made black and not white um, back in, like, 2011. And then they do, like, a little collaboration shit. Uh, Swizzle and Hobson. And that was where Hobson got to start at, which you have to know what Hobson is. You have to. So then Hobson does his own shit. He like leaves, I guess he was um he was on I think he was on he was on um Death Row in like two thousand nine or some shit. He's like forty by this point, if you didn't know. Like people think Hobson like young. Hobson's like forty right now. Uh but Hobson was signed to to them and he got like shelved, which if you listen to Hobson shit two thousand nine, you wouldn't understand why. But his shit was hot back when I was like fucking twelve. Um, and they do this shit, and then like they actually get a buzz. Like I mean, I, even like I mean, obviously Hobson's Hobson, but even like Swizzle shit, which <laughs> a short like half black, half Mexican dude with a uh, fucking massive ass contest with a fucking I'm not even gonna say anything about it. But that dude was that dude had like he had um. I don't want to say he had like flow, but uh, he he just he was what niggas liked back then. Niggas liked kind of the um, the like triplet flow, rapping fast on the beat, being edgy, kind of like talking about how much other niggas suck at making like gangster music, even though they themselves just rock gangster niggas beats. Um, you know, hypocrisy was big in music. Niggas being lame because they make music that people enjoy, which I st I think at that time I was in a, I was very if you listen to Our Future, if you listen to counterculture like underground New York niggas that was coming up like Action Bronson and uh, other niggas like that, uh, Rock Marciano blah 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 like the counterculture was huge. It's just you gotta say it in a non corny way. You can't just be like, yeah, me and my hot topic fit that cost five dollars makes me automatically cooler than you, you scummy F-word bitch. Because they had to say F-word every five seconds. Uh, you scummy F-word bitch. Uh, you and your stupid chain and your women that enjoy your company. And I really would want to be you, but I can't be you because my music sucks and only appeals to other people that are depressed on the internet. But you got Hobson the crowd. For, Hobson has an audience this fucking day. If you look at a Hobson video right now, and Hobson video would still be doing a million views. You look up, obviously, Tyler Crater. That Tyler and Hops are the same fucking person. People are like, notice that. I saw, I saw both of them come up. They were, they were the same fucking person at one point, except Tyler was more famous, and Tyler, Hops basically wrote Tyler for views. But um, this is the... <laughs> I don't know if it's going to get taken down or not, but I'm going to play this uh, Swiss. This nigga had multitude of millions of views on some of his shit back then. And this is just... <laughs> It's, if you don't know that beat, I mean, can I switch this up? I don't know. I, I don't think you can switch it up. Can you switch it up? You can't turn it. Okay. There you go. You see, you see the fucking contacts? Like the all black contacts, the fucking uh, conjuring ass shit. Conjuring is a, a reference to actually like I'm Swizzle 
Yep, I'm swizzle, bitch. Oh, I'm swizzle, bitch. Yeah, I'm swizzle, bitch. There's like 22 wearing like all black contacts. And I still count to 10 on my fingertips. I'm swizzle, bitch. Yep, I'm swizzle, bitch. I'm swizzle, bitch. Yeah, I'm swizzle, bitch. What? I should have sent a fucking washing machine recording this. No, I'm swizzle, bitch. You're a retard. You need a helmet when you walk the boulevard. I. And that doesn't scream like to you like YouTube rap ten years ago. I don't know what does. Um, I don't have anywhere else I need to, anything else I need to talk about in this video. I think I kind of expressed. It's just as me waxing poetic about music ten years ago. Honestly, dude, internet culture is fucking beautiful, dude. I'm I'm sorry, internet culture was beautiful. Like the level of pretentiousness that someone would have because they found out some lame ass rapper and then they would get actively mad at you for not liking said lame ass rapper actively pissed off at you for not liking that rapper i i mean it's impressive dude i mean it really is i, I can't i people think i'm I, you think i'm being like ironic here it's fucking cool that at one point people like listeners cared so much about the quality of music obtaining said music uh, like really in, indulging and engaging in such music in such a down low way that if you were to insult said artist, you would be murdered <laughs> for doing that shit. You would be fucking desecrated on the internet for doing that shit. But um, yeah, this is just this is a funny period in time. Like a lot of these dudes that kind of came, I, I think dudes like that came around this time that didn't make it by now. I, I imagine. Are uh, doing something else, like like working uh, and at a uh, <laughs> like I'm working back at McDonald's to 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 flip a joke uh from that period of time about mainstream rap. Some of those dudes are probably working at McDonald's at this point, which is cool. I mean, not everyone's meant to rap. And I think that if guys were able to even make a lot of money from this shit for a certain period of time, that's about all you can ask for. I, I mean, hell, I would have loved to have it. If you gave me, like, three years, like, the most contemporary, uh, impressive underground label at that period of time for about, give me two years, which... I mean, that's basically our future. Like most niggas in our future, based on their two years, I would, I would take that. I don't know if anybody else. I would. You give me two years of just being on fucking top. And the only problem with that is that you see a lot of niggas that kind of fell off in that period of time is they just, um, they really ain't, ain't doing too well now. A lot of them are very bitter. Um. It's sad to see that too. I mean, I don't want to talk, you know, in just circles here, but like, uh, it's sad as like whenever I see like Haji beats like be like tolerating shit. Whenever I see like, you know, they're they're patched up now for a while. I think Earl Sweatshirt and like Tyler was like throwing subs at each other, uh, like a long time ago, but like, you know, post uh future, um, you know that shit was sad, bro. Like, it's um. I don't know, like a lot, a lot, seeing those dudes like fall apart, like you see like now they're back up, but like seeing like Raider Clan dudes like diss each other or like like ir irrelevant niggas in ASAP like tell Ferg that he ain't shit. Like it's just like I I, I don't know, it's just like I, even if I don't like the group, like I'm not, a, I wasn't a huge um, ASAP head What the funk volume podcast? Holy shit. <laughs> they got hops in back. Wow. That's impressive. Um, but if I wasn't like a huge, like, I don't know, underachievers fan, like, you know, I would still respect those niggas, you know. I don't know. <laughs> so many the the best part of YouTube comments, man. This is the best part of all time. So this is back to the, the nigga who's rapping the washing machine, Swizz. Uh, so many people like Swizz, and there are the few guys that don't see how good he is and think he's impersonating I-M-P-E-R-S-I-N-A-T-I-N-G other rappers 
tr people troll his comments. They do the same with Hobson. Swizz and Hobson are the two most underrated rappers out there. It takes a real G to rap. I can't fuck that up. It takes a real G to rap on a. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. The comment, I, I, my mouth won't let me say it. It takes a real G to rap on a dryer. I don't think that does. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I missed anything else. I mean, I, I'm really just thinking about like, the meme underground. Like this, obviously, other talented cats that were coming up in 2011. You know, fucking like knowledge. Um, you know, brain feeder collective. Um, you know, duality from 2012 was a fucking classic. It's also about to be 10 years old. Fuck, that's crazy. Uh, shout out to shout out to Adult Swim who put me on to a lot of good music. Uh, Adult Swim summer program put me on to um to to duality with Captain Murphy a uh, a, a flying lotus offshoot. Uh, it put me on to Kitty Pride who was kind of like this down tempo like lo fi pretty much precursor to bedroom pop. Uh, who went a different direction later on, but like. Pretty much just making bedroom pop before bedroom pop before Claro, whoever else you want to mention. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think you put on. I think you put him on to. Um, I want to say it's that uh, Major Laser. I want to say you put him on to Major Laser first. I want to say. I'm trying to remember who all. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, no, not not fucking Funk Volume. Good gracious. Uh, let's see. Adult Swim. Do I have some? I have like shitty acne, and I like wonder why it's fucking just killing my fucking face. Uh, summer lineup. I don't know if they still do this because who watches TV anymore? But uh, let me see. Captain Murphy. Okay. Nah, I need a twenty twelve. It's twenty thirteen. No, what? Oh, this is a different single. Okay, but Adult Swim Singles, that's, that's the name of the program. I thought it was like Summer Lineup or some shit like that. It's 2013. Okay, shout out also to GTA. Uh, GTA put me on to Freddie Gibbs. This is 2013, but put me on to Freddie Gibbs. GTA is almost nine years old. Holy fuck. Wow. Um, put me on to Freddie Gibbs. Uh, put me on to um, BJ the Chicago Kid. Well, I heard him on the Gambino album, but you know, um, put me on to a lot of cats on like the alternate, like non hip hop joints, but I can't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, they they were on the first, I think they had Jai Paul uh, Jasmine on there, which was the same year that uh, Leak ones that the tape that leaked, well, I was supposed to drop, so they, they were the first one to have Jasmine on there. Um, let's see. They put me onto a lot of nigga shit. I'm trying to think on top of my head, but they, Ali Boomer, yeah. I mean, they put me on to Ali Boomer, yeah. It was crazy. Um, Kendrick Lamar was underrated in 2012. Like he didn't like before. Obviously, fucking Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, which good? That's the funniest shit. Good Kid, Mad City was like just this random ass nigga. Like, I just saw his album on OFT. And I just see this nigga, you know, like it's like a, it's like a, it was a van. It was because like, I used to download the music. Uh, it was a cover with a van on it, and I was like, okay, this is cool because they put me on to uh, to Joey Badass. They put me on to Frank Ocean. I was like, you know, I could do a Frank Ocean story later, but they put me on all this shit. And it's like this nigga, you know, this nigga with the fucking van. I was like, okay, I'll listen to this nigga. Didn't know who this motherfucker was. I think I might have heard. The City with Game on there first. Oh, that might have come after. I'm not sure. I know I heard Martian vs. Goblins, which was I, like pretty much the first time other than the uh, the Pusha T joint. The Pusha T, Pusha T Tyler Crater joint. Uh, Trouble on my mind. I saw that on uh, MTV. Uh, was it, no, it was VH1. I saw it on VH1. That was the first time I've ever seen Tyler, uh, I want to say, on TV. They also showed... Uh, they also showed um, uh, Yonkers. Which I, they also showed Yonkers on there. I don't know which one I saw first, but I want to say I saw Trouble in My Mind first. Um, and then I saw The City uh, after Martian vs. Goblins. Martian vs. Goblins was a fucking hit for me back in the day. That was just my lane of music. Horrorcore shit, shock value shit. I love that shit back in the day. But um, 
the city game put on Kendrick quite a bit with that one. Uh, but I, I don't know if I heard that before I heard GKMC. But GKMC was like, this is fucking great. Like, the first time I think I heard the Art of Pure Pressure, I was like, this is one of the best ones I've ever heard in my life. And then Backyard Freestyle, you know, that just, like, triplet flow, like, trying to kill everything type of uh, flow that he did in the back half of that. GKMC was, like, instant classic status. Like, I didn't even know this nigga wasn't. This shit is fucking incredible. I don't know how long it took for me to listen to uh, Section 80. I know I didn't listen to it, like, right after that, but I, I downloaded it soon after. I just didn't listen to it really that much until way after. But, um, yeah, Kendrick, that nigga was crazy coming out. Like, Kendrick was, like, a backpacker up until GKMC, and he just exploded. I mean, I, I didn't even... I had uh, Take Care downloaded, but I don't think I ever gave Buried Alive interlude a real listen. To learn what that nigga was about. And then, uh, I know I played the Little B SSO Freshman Freestyle quite a bit and it had him on there. And I just, the only thing I remember about him was that he was a nigga that had the chain. Like, he was like rapping to his chain, which is the coldest shit ever. But obviously, I came there for Little B. So I remember Little B. But Little B helped put Kendrick on. A lot of niggas helped put Kendrick on that, uh, ain't as big as Kendrick now. now. But, um, yeah, so Kitty had a song. So this is 2013. Uh, Kitty had a song with, with, uh, with, uh, produced by Hot Sugar. That was, I think, Barbie Jeep, if I remember correctly. They had, this is 2013. They had Run the Jewels. They had Mad Lib plus Freddie Gibbs. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, what it is currently, which is, uh, is this Mac DeMarco? Okay, and this is between villains, if I remember correctly. See, so, yeah, 2013 it was between villains. Uh, beautiful Lou, Action, Bronson, and Riff Raff. It isn't Rookies of the, of the uh, Future, which I thought it might be based on, but that was Alchemist. So this is 2012. I don't know. It doesn't refresh the track listing for some reason, but whatever. Um, yeah, this is this is the Kitty joint, which got taken down for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't have the rights anymore. But uh, she saw the Adult Swim. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know what to say. Uh, I know the Mortal Orchestra. Dude, they had some low key ass shit, bro. Unknown Mortal Orchestra. They're pretty big now. They had a Death Grip song on it? I didn't even know that shit. They had a Death Grip song in 2012 on here. Death Grips was crazy back in the day. Um, I don't really give them, I guess, their love they deserve at this point, but shout out to Death Grips. I think that's it. I really don't know what else I'm doing with this. Uh, after 2000, or towards late 2012, early 2013, I found about a Kanye Tother, which in effect helped me find out about Kanye West uh, a little bit deeper. You know, I, I, I loved... Um, I loved 808s and the Heartbreaks from what I heard of it, which was, you know, like, uh, uh, Love Lockdown, uh, Heartless, uh, Amazing. I was like kind of the big three for me. I love Lockdown and, and Heartless, really. Um, flashing lights. I played it all. Like flashing lights. The first time I really got into flashing lights was on GTA V in two thousand and eight or two thousand nine, whichever one. I think it's two thousand eight. And um, I remember that there was like some kind of cinematic where you could just like play flashing lights, and that shit's always in the back of my head. Like you would just, I don't know if it's the comedy show or what, but I had flashing lights playing in the background. It was just fucking like I had flashing lights on my PSP Go too. Yeah, because that wasn't the first time I heard it. It was, it was on my PSP Go. Uh, it's on my PSP. And it was also my PSP Go. Uh, flat, the, the three songs I had on my PSP, I know off the first time off the top of my head, was, um, was Flashing Lights. It was Throw Some D's on the Remix by Kanye West. And then it was Forever, Kanye West, Drake, Eminem, and uh, Lil Wayne. Those are three I know off the top of my head I had on there. Damn. 
I, I, I fuck with Todd, uh, Kanye West for a while, but after I got him KTT and like this nigga made Yeezus, I was like, wow, that's crazy. I'm like, I just remember playing. 2013 is still two years from now, but that summer of 20, 2013, playing like acid rap like crazy, um, and and Chance was was kind of had his name thrown around quite a bit on on OFT. You know, I think Ten Day came out in 2000. Eleven? How was it 2011? Um, but I never listened to him. You know, uh, it's the same thing Weekend. Like, Weekend was like this. I thought Weekend was a rapper. And, like, I found out, like, his shit wasn't rappers. Like, I don't give a fuck about it. But, like, 28. The first time I heard 28 was, like, 2000. And I want to say, like, like, Late 2012, 2011, like late 2011. Uh, and I was on a, I was on a Naruto forum. And this is me being like very transparent at this point. I was, I was on a Naruto forum. It's called Naruto base. You can look it up. It's not called that anymore, but you can look up Naruto base. And one of the moderators, coolest ass motherfucker on there. Um, he was a huge weekend stand, but this is like 2011 where like nobody fuck with weekend like that. Like this nigga was like, had the fucking, um, the, the 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 hair, I forgot what you call it, type of hair. You had the hair, um, you had the et so like shit, and then you, you you would hear like crew love and shit like that. But I was like, this nigga really not like that. Um that nigga was became hot, obviously. But weekend was like weekends are back then was fucking crazy, dude. Like this nigga's like transcendent. I didn't even fuck with him that heavy. Um like I would play because niggas had signatures on forums back then, and the mod I'm talking about, he'd have like 28 in his signature. You know, Valerie, um, you know, like shit like that, like just gangsta ass weekend shit. Weekend was just crazy, dude. And then the kiss, when the Kissland, uh, Kissland, I forgot, Kissland Aesthetics came out, and the fucking uh, Panda Dog, you know, Weekend was on, like, Nick's career is like PND was hot, Breath of Toronto was hot, uh, Wild Bitches hot. PND one, you know, good. PND two, okay, pretty solid. But niggas ain't have an aura that that nigga that we can have, bro. I'm not trying to nut hug this nigga, but like that nigga was gonna be something one way or the other, bro. And I mean, seeing art like that nigga Gambino, you know, like again 2013, but like 2012, like um, niggas put me on the royalty, the mitts tape, and I was like. The first time I heard Gambino was like early 2011. Gambino was like one of the earliest niggas I was on. Uh, I think the regular show. Help put me onto that nigga by just like riffing through music on uh on YouTube. Uh Freaks and Geeks was like the first Gambino song I heard. I can remember that concrete. That was the first Gambino song I heard. And that shit was on foil. I think I think my nigga, my 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 homie, um, older cousin, dude was named Devin. Uh I think he put me onto that motherfucker. Cause he was like big into like underground like niggas like that. Got like Gambino in twenty eleven. And he put me on that nigga because of um I think it might be because of the regular show shit, but that shit was hot. Like, I thought this nigga was crazy. And then I heard uh, You See Me, which is like, it wasn't the first, the second one I heard, I'm pretty sure was uh, was uh, Bonfire, but, which everybody, every frat party you've ever been to has Bonfire in the playlist, right? But Bonfire and then You See Me, which was like a looping video. And you could probably still find it somewhere on there, but like, it was just You See Me playing and then like, it's a looping video of like it going into his eyes and like zoom, loop, looping back out and zooming in on his eyes and looping back out. Very psychedelic. Uh, that should always be in my head. Gambino was like this meme ass nigga. You hear like, you know, break all of the um, lights and then um, uh, put it in my video and along his test matches, like, like the simp shit, heartbeat. Uh, the simp shit was cool too, but like I didn't really like fuck with like non hip hop like that for real. And then this nigga come out with like, 3005 and shit. I'm like, what the hell? Like, that shit opened my eyes. Like, 3005, um, telephone. At, oh my God, dude. I can't even tell you. Like, if I had last FM 2013, I can't even tell you how many, like, how many numbers Gambino. Gambino was probably my most played artist outside of Earl Sweatshirt up until like 2016, I want to say. Like, I played, well, 2015, because I started playing like, uh, a, a wider swath of niggas after that but like from 2010 to 2014 it would have been Gambino or one of those two would be in the top two 
and then Tyler, and then probably Kanye, probably, maybe, but definitely those top three. Damn, man, I don't know. I, this is just me, like, I, the one thing I hate is that niggas, a lot of niggas from that period of time that was on the internet, like me, you know, they got old, they just don't give back to like, that knowledge and a, and a uh, you know, a, a, a decorative, uh, or not decorative, but a substantial, substantive sense Nothing they can do anything with, you know, like, I think niggas, I think every nigga that came around that period of time that was on some niggas that was, like, low-key as fuck, you know, Travis Scott, he was low-key, um, Toro E. Moy, I mean, fucking Clamps Casino, whoever, I mean, just share your experiences to me, that's what I'm trying to do here, I'm talking for 35 minutes, I need to go to, I got class tomorrow, I'm gonna step out, but, um, I'm old as fuck now, dude. I'm just fucking see the lines coming in and shit, too. Damn, dude. I'm getting old as fuck, bro. Hope, hope the young niggas enjoy this, man. My message is, man, please indulge with music more. Like, don't make this shit just a trend. Like, niggas on tick, nigga, they, t I, they call it, they're so fucking trite, but the TikTok generation, they call it. People just treat music like a fucking, like an hors d'oeuvre, man. Like, it's just quick and it goes down quick and that that feeds into the music, the way the music is being formed is for those attention spans. So if motherfuckers are making music for dudes who only can like listen for 30 seconds, motherfuckers are like basically treat albums like playlists where they just shuffle through that shit, find their best songs they want, and then leave. That shit is so destructive to music, dude. And I know there's niggas that like are still putting it down for like real art, like constructing real track list and sequencing all that shit but like i mean it's even creeping to the niggas that's supposed to be like heralded i mean kanye west made this fucking adhd's both love and fucking hate a 26 song joint where the nigga can't even like leave cutting floor tracks on the cutting floor and to add four more songs and four of those songs of those four songs could have replaced the four songs that were part ones on that motherfucker. I swear they could have. I really think they could have. I you can't tell me you can't just make a long ass jail and just put both Jay's and the baby's verses on there. I don't know. Or niggas like making like basically EPs and calling them albums like that's that's acceptable in comparison. Back in twenty eighteen, I was like, this nigga child this nigga Kanye dropped a really decent EP, but this shit is not an album. I think I would prefer that shit to some of the shit that came after it. Um, uh, peace, man. Enjoy. Please support niggas making good ass projects. Off the top of my head, dude. Yes, as trying as it sounds, Griselda niggas they do put down for making at least good music. They they try to at least keep a flame for old niggas types of making music and try to make that as modernized as possible. Griselda niggas, JPEG Mafia, uh, Makami, Your Old Drew. Um, I mean, even like slums niggas, you know, uh, navy blue, uh, which is basically another odd feature nigga, uh, Earl Sweatshirt, uh, Mike, Mobby, you know, Matt So, uh, you know, Matt So Cream just released a pretty good project. Um, I mean, even Tyler, Tyler still like made maybe the best album of the year rap wise. Uh, non rap, you know, you got fucking Unknown Mortal Orchestra. They just, I think, came out one in the past two years. Uh, you know, you want some like down tempo shit. The Mariahs, I'm just like thinking about the top of my, my list right now. Um, you know, I mean, even mainstream shit. Like, I think mainstream shit, mainstream pop actually, like, in the past two, three years, you know, hasn't been that bad, you know, like. Way as blood, uh, Phoebe Bridgers, you know, as, as trite as like their fan bases, you know, are. But I mean, it's still good shit. Big Thief, um, I like Doty. That's kind of like like more low key, but I like Doty. You know, she got a couple of TikTok hits. Um, you know, like this niggas that came after Claro that did Claro shit. But I I like uh, Bia Badoobie, even though like her name, and you know the, the fucking. I'm done, bro. I'm, I'm, I keep on going. But, like, there's still niggas on the internet support that's making good shit. You know, like, 
I mean, just support them in a way that's not clearly some nerdy gatekeeping. Like, we don't need, like, backpack rap, like, again, but, like, that shit more, like, I, I don't know how you make acceptable backpack rap because it wouldn't be backpack rap at that point, but, like, making that shit accessible but not, like, too accessible would kind of sort of feeling a little bit. You gotta start backpack rap, I guess. You gotta figure right away. Get niggas like, um, get niggas like Open My Ego to make a label. Just like ask that nigga to sign niggas to a label and to see what he. I think any nigga that Open My Ego would like be like, this 20 year old nigga is signing my label. I would trust Open My Ego to do some shit like that. Open My Ego, if you're watching this shit, please do a label, man. Peace.